Dice Tower tonight, episode 35. Baby, let's cruise. Welcome to Dice Tower Tonight, a video cast about board games and card games, and especially the people who play them. On tonight's show, we're just days away from setting sail on the Dice Tower cruise and making final decisions on what to bring. Moderator Crystal has prepared some devious games. We discuss some we got to the table recently, and we chat with the audience live. I'm Eric Summer. And I'm Crystal Pizzano. And joining us now, the Count Olaf to our Klaus and Violet Baudelaire. Tom Vassell. Uh, I get this reference. You wear a lot of wigs and costumes. Uh, I think it's quite appropriate. I think Count Olaf fit. is the hero of the story. <laughs> <laughs> you would think that. He's like, you know, sometimes you can sit there and go, I can see why this, this person acts that way. They're bad because of a whatever reason. Count Olaf is bad because the author decided to make him bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. He has no redeeming qualities. <laughs> and my video apparently is not working right. So I'm going to turn that off real quick and see if I can get that working again properly. Thank you, chat, for pointing that out. Um, let's see if uh, that is better. Um, apologies for the weird jumpiness, everyone. Um, let us know if that is better. Hopefully, me resetting my webcam helped. It looks like it might be okay. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I wish I was where there was snow right now. Really? That is, that? That is an example of a lie. <laughs> Florida's amazing, everyone. Never get on my case about living here. Me and my wife get up at 5.30, 6 in the morning and walk outside in short sleeves. And I'm like, doo, doo, doo. actually, I'm not because I'm super tired. But I'm like, if I was awake, I'd be so enjoying this right now. Uh, yeah, sure. But but we get to join you there soon. Of course, Crystal's fine with the temperature, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, admittedly, humidity is not my favorite, but um, it's better no. for my skin. I don't know. This humidity keeps you from drying up. Every time I go out to Vegas, it's like you walk outside and it's like I, I'm aging years. You can see your skin just go, <laughs> steam is coming off your hands. It's like all leaving you. You like have to drink water, you'll die. It's like every 10 minutes or something. Uh, fun fact that if you don't live here, but live in this climate, your body does eventually acclimate to it. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm just saying it's not as bad as you describe if you've been here for a little while. I agree. And that's the same thing about Florida. So get off our case. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll just move to Florida and take over the Dice Tower formally. How about that? <laughs> She's already tried to do this on Facebook, Eric. I saw it. Yeah, I, I've i noticed it's it's not so secret a plan, really. <laughs> I mean, You're not very good at this, Eric. The way the secret plan works is A, secret. No, it's my it's my public secret plan to take over the Dice Tower. Speaking of which, uh, Eric, your intro was a little bit different today than it usually is. Why is that? Well, golly, uh, it, it, I'm, I'm trying a few different things. I want to involve the two of us in the intro a little bit more. Uh, cause, cause Tom has said he, he's sick of us. I think that's, that's the way he put it. Well, actually that's true. Um, <laughs> the, uh, no, what, this is part of the rollout. We'll be announcing this stuff on the 21st. Uh, all the changes in the dice tower. This is one of the more minor changes is just because of a lot of different things. I'm going to step away. I don't have control of this show anyway. <laughs> why, what? why should we continue this farce? So Crystal and I are going to uh, uh, continue, of course, as as uh, co-hosts and and leaders of this podcast, uh, and and uh, well, we'll try and keep things relatively similar. Just uh, and Tom still he's promised to come by and annoy us uh, when we get too far out of hand. Uh, but but you're stuck with the two of us, and uh, and and who knows? We may come up with some new things to. Uh, we'd love to involve the chat more. Uh, then we have we've had a great time with the the chat over the the past several weeks, and uh, I, I think we're we're looking for ways to make it more fun and exciting for everybody. That is 
the accurate. Sorry, I'm still having video issues. I apologize, chat. I'm working on it as much as I can, but I may have to turn my webcam off at some point. Uh, so well, I'll, I'll, I might go try and unplug it, but I, that would require me getting up. So uh, how well, about one of you guys talk about a game? Maybe restart your whole computer. That might work. It'll take a little while if I do that. So yeah, we can talk about our games while you're doing that. All right. You know what? Fine then. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'll be back later. <laughs> I've talked about this a little bit in the past. Okay. And you might wonder why am I talking about it now? Well, two reasons. And because one, it's wrapped. I really like this game, and two, it's the only game here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's still some other games, including that game I said I was going to send you. Oh, you're going on the cruise. You know what? I'm going to forget to give it to you there. Of course but, you are. Um, uh, yeah, I haven't played any of these other ones that are sitting around. This is the game that I had sent to me quickly so that we can have two copies on the cruise because I like this game so much I figured more people would want to play it. Okay. Have you played this one yet, Eric? I have not, no. Have I talked about it on the show? Uh, I, uh, if you did, I don't remember it. I'm on too many shows. This is why I'm 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 trying to to move on. But uh, the King's Guild, in the King's Guild, each player has a guild board. This is your board, uh, so you can see there's. You're going to start with a guild at the top, and let's find a guild. Here we go. Like maybe the Explorers League. This tells you about your league. No one cares. That's just fluff. And then that's where you're going to store different resources. And there's a special starting ability that you'll have. So the game comes with money and other rooms that you can put. But most importantly, the game comes with a big board. On this board, you can see spots for the different resources. These are the resources. On your turn, you have three different actions that you can do. One action is you can take resources. You can take two, any two resources, or you can take three of the same type. Uh, although there's a couple types in here, these magic potions, that purple bottle, and these gems, which are green, you can only take those if you have a matching room. So, for example, uh, yeah, it's in here somewhere. There's a room that you can take to get those. and Or you can go on a quest. You actually don't go on quest. You're a store owner, and you sell items to people who do go on quest. So, for example, to fulfill this quest here or to give this guy a sword, I need to have one wood and one iron. If I do so, I'm going to get three coins. And I'm going to get a treasure chest. There are three different types of treasure, blue, red, and yellow. And there's all sorts of goodies in these treasure chest piles. And some of them are worth points. Some give you other things. You can also hire people, which will give you special abilities, and build rooms. You need to build some rooms so that you can uh, get the gems and the magic potions. Other rooms give you more store spots. And overall, this game is Super fun. It plays like a slightly advanced Splendor. Because mm. you're taking stuff, you're then spending that stuff to get these cards. Some cards uh, need two people uh, to, or, or they have two different quests on them. Let me pop this card up, and like this one here. To do this one, you need to make a jeweled vest and a shield. Now, the chance of you having all these resources in one go is pretty small, so you can just pay half them and put one of your markers on it. And then later on, you could pay the other half, or someone else might do the other half, and then you'll split the treasure. Very simple. It's really smooth. I'll never play Splendor again. That's probably not true, but uh -huh. I would never pick Splendor over this game. This is from uh, Mirrorbox Games. They made Chaosmos uh, in the oh, past. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I really like this. I mean, I really like it. This is one of my favorite games of the year for sure. I like how smooth it is. On the retreats, I must have played it like six, seven times. And so I got another copy for the cruise. Very cool. All right. Uh, how about I go next? The King's Guild, in case you missed that. So I want to talk about an older game. Well, I guess it's a newer version of an older game. That's Zendo. Uh, this is a Looney Labs game that there was sort of a, you, you could collect uh, different assortments of Looney pyramids and play this with stuff you had at home. Um, I love this game. But uh, this is the new boxed version. You've got all these different pieces, plastic pieces in three different colors. Um, there are boxes, which are four-sided sort of their boxes in three different colors, red, blue, and yellow. There are wedges in the three colors that have sort of a square base, but then the triangular top. And then there are the pyramids that are much like the original Looney pyramids, but there's only one size of them. 
And uh, there's there's a moderator for this game. They are going to make up a rule. Actually, they don't have to make up a rule in this new version. You've got these cards. This is one of the changes from the original version of the game. There's different uh, difficulty levels. And so a structure must contain, and then you put a little clip on one of these possible options. So it might be zero flat pieces, meaning they're, they're pieces that are, that are flat down, uh, laying against the table. And so then that's, a, the that's hard, by the way. That's a hard clue. That is difficult. Uh, so then the moderator makes two assortments of pieces. So they, they might make one as the flat piece. They might make one like this, where you've got a, uh, a flat piece and one sitting up. And then they'll put a black marker on that saying this one doesn't follow the rule because it has to have zero flat pieces. And then another one might just look like this. And that gets a white marker. That's good. It follows the rule. And so then players take turns either uh, assembling selections or they make they make an assortment of their own that they think is going to follow the rule or not, trying to suss out what that is, what the rule is. And they can either just get information by saying, uh, you know, tell me if this follows the rule or not, or they can do what's called a quiz where they're like, I think I know what it is. Let's all guess to see if this follows the rule. And you, you sort of do a blind uh, bid, whether it follows the rule or not. And if you're correct, you get a guessing stone which you can then spend to officially guess the rule. And if you officially guess the rule, you win that round of the game. Uh, there's, like I said, different difficulty levels of these. Um, the, like an easy one says a structure must contain all three colors. But then some of these difficult ones, a structure must contain more of one color than another color. And you put little clips on it to say which one you've selected for the rule. And those can get very, very difficult to suss out. The reason I'm selecting this, I think this is solid. This is a great game. Um, it, it seems well produced. It's it's not you know like glorious. It's you know pretty sparse production. Um, there's two levels of that's not the rule book. There's two levels of the rule book, uh, sort of a beginner and advanced version um, to to bring out more rules as you go. The reason I wanted to talk about it though is that my son had a really bad Saturday. He we went to a ninja competition out of town. It didn't go well for him, and he was really down. And we stopped at a game store on the way home, the, the portal that, Tom, you and I have been to in Manchester. And he pulled this off the library shelf and wanted to play it with me. We played a couple of rounds, uh, and it, he, it cheered him up. And we went on a search to find a copy. They weren't sure if they had any in stock. We went across the street to the toy store and went digging and just sort of browsed and enjoyed each other's company, just exploring the game store did finally find one behind three other games. Um, so we came home with it, and he it, it really brought his spirits up, not just to get a new game, but to sort of hang out at the game store. So Zendo's a great game, and it was a great experience on the way home. I really like Zendo. I just played it a, a few weeks ago, taught some people the game, and man, it's, it's such a good game. But if you've never played before, normally I'll tell you, hey, you know, if you're a gamer, you should start on medium level or hard level. You should always play Zendo on easy until everyone's getting clues like that. Then move to medium, and you should probably never play hard. Yes. And you might think your clue is clever, but there's always going to be... I mean, you could pick... I've seen clues like the red piece is pointing at Tom. You know, that, or... The, it's actually illegal. You can't make a clue like that. Well, this was before they made all these rules illegal. But I mean, there's some really crazy rules that you can make. If there's one red, you know, there's if thens, all kinds of stuff. That's insane. Right. Just play the normal way. It will be hard enough. Yes. Yeah. I've never played Zendo, and it's always kind of intrigued me. It's great. It's excellent. It will be on the cruise. Along it is with on the cruise. Yeah. All right. Well, that'll be one of very many games that I'll say, oh, yeah, maybe I'll play that on the cruise. And then in most cases, I won't. But maybe <laughs> just because I know better, like I always do this with conventions, like, oh, yeah, I can play that on the cruise and we can play that. And I can play this with that person. And right. then literally none of those things happen. And yet somehow it's all a lot of fun anyway. So you're fully booked already with all the things you're trying to play. Uh, yeah, I, I tend to not schedule too much stuff in general. And that tends to work out in my favor because otherwise it gets a little crazy. <laughs> Um, so the game that I want to talk about, I will preface by saying that there is a small amount of content in this game that is not family friendly, but everything I'm going to be discussing and the majority of the game is family friendly or can be made family friendly. So just wanted to say that up front. Um, 
So I like party games quite a bit and my friends um, also enjoy party games. And I know that there are a lot of adult themed party games that I'm not keen on. Um, and I had heard about this and I always thought it was adult themed and it is a little bit, but not entirely. And that is monikers. Um, I had heard good things about this. I've also heard it's ridiculously similar to Time's Up, which I've never played. Um, I don't know what the functional differences are. Tom is nodding. Maybe he can clue me in as to what the differences are. But in monikers, um, there are you select from a like a large amount of cards, and you only pick a small amount of them. Okay, and of course, the ones I grab out of the box are not family friendly. <laughs> That's like there's not that many, truthfully, and I literally just grabbed a handful of some of the worst. Um, so we're gonna try and grab a few more. Here we go. We've got some stuff that's okay. Um, there we go. Um, so all of the, well, most of the cards have either the name of a person or a group of people or a designation of some kind. So the ones I've got here, you can see Jareth, the Goblin King from Labyrinth, a Furby, a Troll Doll, the Kool-Aid Man, and Indigo Montoya from The Princess Bride. Um, you select a bunch of those cards and they all go into a singular deck. You have two teams of players that are uh, playing against one another. And the first team has uh, an amount of time that they go through as many cards in the deck as they can. And they're trying to get their teammates to guess the thing at the top of the card. They can say whatever they want in the first round, including the description that's listed on the card. What's nice about this game is they tell you what every single card is. So if you aren't familiar with the thing on the card, it tells you what that thing is. And some of these are very obscure, so that gets helpful. Um, however many your team guesses, you get to lock away as points for round one. It passes to the other team. And you go back and forth until every single card in the deck has been correctly guessed by one team or the other. That's the end of round one. Then you take that same deck of cards and you play again in round two. But instead of describing everything you want, you can only give single word clues. So what inevitably ends up happening is instead of describing the thing on the card, sometimes you're describing a funny moment that happened in round one about that card. Um, and then you do it the whole thing again till every card gets guessed correctly and you move to round three. And in round three, it is charades only. And some of these people like the Kool-Aid man, maybe that's easy to charade. Uh, but like a troll doll, you know, it's they, there's some interesting moments and it inevitably turns into inside jokes within the game just spiraling into one another. It is so much fun. Uh, like I said, there is some stuff that's not family friendly in here. So if you're playing with kids or people who have are a little more sensitive to certain things, there is some stuff that you'd want to remove. Uh, but the majority of the cards are family friendly. And my friends had a ball with this one. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And yeah, now I'm curious to hear Tom's thoughts. As the chat says, Tom's face has been <laughs> very interesting. No, 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 no. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> wait, hang on. I practiced this before the show started. Interesting. <laughs> I'll let Eric tell you the differences. Okay, because uh, I've never played Time's Up, so I don't know. I, I didn't actually hear any differences. That sounds like exactly Time's Up. Oh. It, is, it, it, it is almost identical, Eric. The main difference is the, the cards themselves. Like she said, it's a little bit more non-family friendly. Also, it's a little more pop culture-ish-y. Yeah, there's more pop culture type stuff in here um, for sure. So it's up to you, the audience, if you would like the more pop culture-y, edgy, um, uh, anti-family friendly, bad for you, non-educational version, monikers, or would you prefer Time's Up, the more family friendly, educational one that Tom Basil plays? <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah. You, it takes you, you, one half dozen of the other, really. Yeah, I, what's funny is I actually didn't purchase this uh, one of my coworkers who plays board games casually um, bought it or got it given to her uh, to play with her group. And she came to me at work and she said, this game fell flat with my group. Do you want it? And I said, sure, because I'm not going to turn down a board game that I've at least heard of. And so, yeah, I, this was a free game for me and I enjoy it quite a bit. So that is Monikers. The thing about Monikers is, is to me, it, it's a... It's a non-issue monikers versus times up because I will play probably neither one of them if I could play times up title recall. Ooh, see, and I've never played that either. It's the same thing, but it's titles of books, songs, and movies. And it's Ooh. so much more fun, I think. Okay. I'd be I feel like I'd be really good at that. So I'd be curious to try that one for That's sure. Very egotistical response, but yes. <laughs> As a side note for uh New Year's Eve, my kids and I watched labyrinth for the first time 
So having Jareth, the Goblin King, show up is kind of cool. Dance magic dance. That indeed. <laughs> uh, all right. So usually Tom hosts the games, the trivia, the shenanigans on this show. But I am taking over, as we've already said, by my not-so-secret plan. Uh, so I'm going to be testing Tom and Eric tonight with some trivia. But I'm going to do it. Am playing? Yes, you're, you're playing. playing. Of course you are. Mm. You what? You thought you were just going to sit there and make interested faces, like hmm and hmm the whole time? Like, come on, you can't just get Take away. Take it off my game show outfit. I'm not wasting this stuff on this. <laughs> suspenders. <laughs> off they go. Oh no, things are going to get not very family friendly quickly. <laughs> oh, there's another shirt. <laughs> yes, come on now. This isn't. I. Just, I just, I saw, Amish country, baby. Bring I it on! Something, I saw something lighter than blue underneath <laughs> that I could not tell immediately that it was another shirt. Oh, gosh. All right. So, I'm ready in the play. style of games Look that you all are used to and Tom likes to do to us, I'm going to do something similar here to start mm -hmm. off. So, um, I went to the Board Game Geek database and I put in some words and you all are going to have to guess uh, how often those words show up in the Board Game Geek database. Uh, we will start with Eric. Uh, Eric, I would like you to guess how many, and this is again, like Tom says, not closest without going over, just closest in general. Also, right. I'm bad at math, so it might take me a minute to figure that out. But uh -huh. uh, So Eric, tell me how many gate or how not how many games, how many listings in the Board Game Geek database have the word cruise in the title? I'll say 37. Eric says 37. Uh, Tom, what is your guess? This is like casual Tom. Weird. 14. 14. Okay. So I had a moment there where I had to like restrain myself because Eric got it exactly correct. It was 37. <laughs> now, if you guys are going to collude beforehand, this is kind of a. You should at least have Eric get close to the right answer, not on it. Sorry, I, I did. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll be. I'll be within one or two next time. That gives very, away the plan you know, too early. It was so difficult for me to not make a face. I'm pretty sure I did. If people go back in the video, they'll see I kind of had a like up uh, moment. <laughs> so uh, yes, the 37. Okay, so uh, Eric gets a point now for a bonus point. Is it worth only one point. I mean, I, well, you know what? You're right. You get uh, three points because you hit it exactly on. Yeah, there we go. New rule. Hey! <laughs> so for a bonus point, uh, both of you can guess what is the highest numerical ranked game uh, in with that has Cruise in the title. So not the name of the game, but what ranking is the highest ranked? And I will say most of those games did not have a numerical ranking, but a couple of them did. So what is the, the ranking of the highest ranked game with Cruise in the title? Uh, Tom, you can go first. Well, my first guess would be Speed 2, Cruise Control. Not, but... not the name. So the, the numerical rank. You don't actually have to know the, the game, what it is. What? You just want me to guess a random number? Yes. Yep. How high, how highly ranked is the best ranked game with Cruise in the title? Um, wow. I still think it's speed to cruise control. Um, we'll go with, uh, 4,325. Okay. And Eric, what's your guess? I think Tom Cruise Monopoly comes in at 7,004. <laughs> Um, okay, well, it is not either one of those games. The highest ranked game with Cruise in the title is Great War at Sea, Cruiser Warfare. No, that's Cruiser and Cruise are different words. It has Cruise in it. It counts. Uh, my no. rules, I'm running no. the game now. Sorry. Just today, I had this exact same thing happen where I looked up a different word on Board Game Geek for a different game that may or may not be happening in five days. And I discluded the same, the same situation. Well, you know what? I'm running this show right now, and it's my <laughs> rules. So, um, and that ranked game is ranked 7,460. So, Gosh. Eric is really close. <laughs> so, Eric gets another point. Eric's now up to four, and Tom has zero. Uh, this is fun. Let's go to the next question. All right, we're going to – how about games that have 
ship in the title. And just to clarify, that does mean any words that have ship in them, not just the singular word ship by itself necessarily. Uh, so we'll go to Tom first on this one for the primary guess. Um, so how, how many, many games? Yeah, how many games and how many listings have ship? Uh, 327. 327. All right, Eric. I'll go 250. 250. Uh, all right, well, the uh, correct answer is 222. So Eric is getting another point. So that's five for Eric. All right, bonus point. This is the uh, lamest cheating I've ever seen, but all right. I, <laughs> I really wish we had set this up because that would have been funnier, but we didn't. So actually, this is funnier. This is funnier, yeah. Um, all right, Tom. You know what, Tom? I'm just going to give you a freebie here. Can you name the highest ranked game that has ship in its title? And I will say, I'll even give you this. It's in the top thousand on Board Game Geek. Well, that's obvious. There's definitely Shipyard, for example, is definitely in the top thousand. I'm not sure that's it, but I'm going to go with Shipyard. You are correct. Back. It is Shipyard 466. Back off, Eric. Shipyard for the win. It's in the Dice Tower Library. It's an awesome game. Designed I was going to say. Suchi, who designed Underwater Cities, which is the current hotness, but Shipyard was around for years, and I've been talking about it. He also designed Last Will. Sorry. I was actually surprised that I was not familiar with Shipyard when I found it, then that it's in the top 500 on Board bet, Game Geek. I bet Amby would be. Amby would, Pro Amby would know this one. Probably. All right. So Relationship Tightrope was not the, the top one? It wasn't relationship type rope. Relationship type rope is not uh, higher than shipyard, sir. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, all right, Eric, you're going first for this next one. How many games in the listings have, or how many listings on BGG have ocean in their title? And again, words containing ocean also count. <clears throat> uh, let's say 416. 416. All right, Tom, how many do you think? I don't think there's more oceans than ships. Although there is more ocean than ships. Um, <laughs> and that's definitely how people design games. Is, is there more ocean than ships? Well, then there should be more ocean games. You don't know how people design games. I'm going to go with 94. 94. All right. Well, the point is going to go to Tom this time. There are 51 games oh. of ocean in the title. So Tom now has two points to Eric's five. Um, I will, you know what, I'm going to say first person to say it gets it, name the top ranked game that has ocean in its title. Oceanos. Oceanos. Uh, okay, Tom gets the point. <laughs> yeah. Eric can guess random numbers. I, I, the trivia and I'm there. I Come was on, waiting Eric. for her to stop talking, but you know, you just jumped in. That's fine. She said the first person to say it. She didn't say it as soon as I'm done with the sentence. I mean, I technically do have to. Tom is accurate in this regard. I don't like to give it to him, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right. So how many games, how many listings in the BGG database have Jamaica in their title? Wow. Wait, I already know the highest rated one. Okay, so hold on. No, we're not. that's not, that's not a bonus. Uh, Eric, you get to guess first. <laughs> well, I'm guessing first on this one. Uh, yeah. Let's say... 42. Eric says 42. Tom. 14. Tom is catching up. There are 12 games. Or oh. Three, there are seven games with Jamaica in the title. Seven. And two of those are Jamaica and then the Jamaica expansion. <laughs> <laughs> I did go out of my way, guys, to get a copy of Jamaica because some people pointed out that if we went to Jamaica and didn't have the game, that would be odd. That would be silly. Yeah. Fun fact, I'm a Jamaica savant. I've played that game a number of times, and every time I've played it, I've won handily, and I have no idea why. Like, also, even the first a time. a lot of luck, just as a heads up. I mean, yes, but it's weird that, like, luck has always fallen in my favor. Like, statistically, that's odd. Um, I'm saying it's skill at this point, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so bonus. How many games have Haiti? in the title? I'm guessing 12. Two. Ooh, Tom nails it. It is two. <laughs> we are tied. It is now five to five. I get it. I, what game has Haiti the title anyway? I, I'm trying to think. Is there like a rescue Haiti type, type game that they made as like a... Yeah, there was an expansion for some game and then there was one game that actually had Haiti in the title, but I don't remember what it was. And I don't have that in my notes. Tom All right, could so, get three points for getting it exactly right though, right? 
Oh, that's accurate. Yeah. Darn it. That's that's what a good sport I am. I, I rule. <laughs> You didn't have to point it out. I honestly would not have remembered. So, yes, Tom now has seven to Eric's five. Thanks, I forgot to, Eric. Um, all right. So, last but certainly not least, uh, there's a thing that happens when a lot of people get on a boat, and that is that they get sick. <laughs> so, how many listings in the Board Game Geek database have the word sick in their title? Uh, we will go with Tom first this time. And if, I'm going to mess that up at some point. Y'all can yell at me. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> 73. 73? All right, Eric, how many do you think? Uh, let's do 56. And Eric is closer. The, the, I know, fun fact, I'm glad y'all weren't paying attention since I read this answer early. It is 12. That was the 12. <laughs> it was I thought the that 12. was the Haiti one. I was hoping that I didn't uh, completely ruin it, and clearly not. So that means Eric now has six to Tom seven. All right. So now it's time for the feud, everyone. We are going to family the highest feud style. Game that has the word sick in it. I'm trying to think of it. The most of them, oh, oh, I did actually write down the highest numerically ranked game that has the word sick in it is called Zobmondo Would You Rather Twisted Sick and Wrong Late Night. So much punctuation, so many words, horrible name for a game. Yeah, Eric's read that one though. <laughs> for audiobooks. Based on the novel of the same name. I just yeah, obviously. Um yeah, that came out in 2005. Very weird. Um but yeah, let's move into the feud. So I surveyed a number of people online, most of which are board gamers, I hope, um and a lot of which know me. Take that into account in one of the later questions. Um <laughs> I technically ended up with like 180 something answers, but I had to compile data before I uh, stopped accepting answers. So I have 137 answers um, that were 137 people surveyed. And so we're gonna go through six questions. Uh, for question number one, which I just realized I have the answers in this document, and I don't have the questions, so that's not very helpful. Here we go. <laughs> question number one, what is the one item that is most important to pack when going on a cruise that you wouldn't pack for an average vacation. And there are a total of six answers on the board. Um, we will say Eric can go first this time. Um, and I will give points based on the number of answers, not based on how many people answered a specific thing, because otherwise things would get crazy. Question. Yes. Uh, I don't understand the point system, but also can we, are we trying to get the most or is that bad? You can get the most, yes. This is not the whole whammy for the first place answer thing. Yeah, that's so, that's a terrible way to play games. And that is also why, so the point system means- That was your idea, Summer. <laughs> to, <laughs> since there are six answers on the board, that means the top ranked answer will be worth six points, number two will be worth five, and so on and so forth. Because otherwise, you'll see some of these are weighted real heavily to that top answer, um, and I- it's a low point game. I don't want to like swing things too. We heavily. can't get like 80 points in one go. Yeah, that I'm, would be. I'm going to say Dramamine. Dramamine is the top answer on the board. So that's six points for Eric, taking you up to 12. All right, Tom, give me another one. Uh, did, when you said Dramamine, is that just including everything in that ilk? Yes. Uh, so every answer that was Dramamine, seasickness medication, seasickness pills, uh, seasickness bands, even like the wristbands, I included all of those in this top answer. Did Bonacore answer? Because uh, an extra bottle of wine would be probably what he wrote. Uh, uh, so I did not uh, take <laughs> names from survey responders. <laughs> I'll go with sunscreen. Sunscreen? Eh, not on the board. Huh. That seemed. That seemed legitimate. You would think uh, it is not what people put down. I'm going to say that most people consider a normal vacation staying within the country, so I'll say passport. Ooh, good one. Good one. Pa good. I got you the family two things. Good, good, answer. Answer. good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Uh, passport is on the board. It is the number three response. So that one is worth four points. All right. Back to you, Tom. Ooh. I would have guessed Passport was number two now. Uh, yeah, there is something that I was surprised by that is the number I'll two. I'll say answer. formal wear. 
Formal wear is on the board. It is the number five response. Hey, and some points is better than no points. Yeah, so that's two points for Tom, taking you up for nine. Uh, I'll say swimsuit. Swimsuit is on the board. It is the number four answer. Oh, but, 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 Suntan Lotion is a tie. It wasn't. I don't make the rules. I mean, I do. Actually, you do. But, you know, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. So, Aaron, or no, who, who answered that? Or Tom, or back to you. Hmm. So there are two answers left on the board. The number two answer and the number six answer are left on the board. And I will give uh, Eric guest first. I'll give Tom. We'll say this is your last one and then we'll move on. Man, I want to say like those bands, but I'm assuming that was included in answer number one. Yes. So seasickness bands was included in number one. Okay. Um, cash. Money. Eh, no cash on the board. All right. So um, this is where I would have the chat, you know, all simultaneously yell out the answers you missed, but I don't, I can't hear them. So I'm going to have to do it for them. So the number two response was, a flotation device of no, some kind. We do not need to bring one of those on. Literally, a so many Come people on, put life jacket or water wings or they provide that for you. Don't waste your luggage space. On I'm it. just saying, ten people, ten people said this, <laughs> and the number six response was board games. Oh, that's right. We weren't considering the audience. Uh, that's on us. That's yep. on us. Yep, yep. Uh, some funny answers that got submitted that were not in the top. An extra stomach, uh, a Wilson volleyball, and <laughs> somebody, uh, someone else will have to explain this one to me, but James Earl Jones. I'm not quite sure why you would pack your very own James Earl Jones. Wait a minute. Did you let Scott King answer these? Because you're going to have one of those answers for everything. I mean, I literally let everybody answer these. Let's so. see, see. I just... I just write those answers right out. <laughs> All right. We are moving on to question number two. Uh, 137 responses. The top eight answers are on the board. What board game is most thematically perfect to play on a cruise? Uh, and Tom is going to be going first this time. Ooh. Well, I have two that come right to my mind, but those... Oh, what cruise? Did you say our cruise or any cruise? Just say eight so the cruise. exact question was, what board game is most thematically perfect to play on a cruise? But, I mean, you know, the audience is also likely to be familiar with the Dice Tower cruise. So Fine, whatever. I'm going to say, uh, I don't think enough people played this one, though. I'll go with Lifeboats. Lifeboats? Is it on the board? It's the number one response! Oh, That's good, good. Eight points for Tom. So that takes you up to 17. You've almost caught up to Eric. All right, Eric, what game is most thematically perfect to play on a cruise? Survive Escape from Atlantis. Well, you all are ringers because that's the number two answer. <laughs> Seven points for Eric. Wow, I would never have guessed that one, Eric. That's good. There's no right, cruise ships on that one, though. That's Yeah, but there are boats, and yeah, things are sinking. All right, I'm going to throw out Jamaica since we're on that subject. Uh, well, if, if this were rigged, this would be how it would happen, because that's the number three answer. <laughs> yes! <laughs> so that is uh, six points for Tom. Uh, let's come back to Shipyard. Eh, not ah. on the board. All right. Uh, I'm going to be... This one's probably not on there, because I don't think enough people play this one, but I'm going to go Lifeboat. Unless uh, you combine those two. I definitely combined those two. Those are two very different games, Crystal. <laughs> well, Crystal literally did this today, like <laughs> during her lunch break at work. So when she was compiling data, she was not that, um, you know. <laughs> All <picky>. right, fine. <laughs> All right, how about the sinking of the Titanic board game? Yep. Uh, any Titanic response was grouped together, and that is the number five response. Yes. People are morbid. What is wrong with you all? <laughs> four. So that is four points for Tom, and that puts us into a tie. On, uh, we'll give uh, Eric. We'll give you. We'll give you two more guesses, Tom. You'll get one more guess. 
Oh, so. good, because I got nothing. <laughs> um, trying to think of something that would be like food related. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, oh, what's the cooking dexterity game? The um, yeah, the um, oh, I can't remember. Let's say kitchen rush. No, not and... the game. We, not the game we played on the cruise last time. <laughs> All right, we'll call it now if y'all are both scraping the bottom of the barrel. Well, wait, uh, wait, wait, I got a guess. Okay, Tom has another guess. So, Eric, no, I, prepare I, I, yourself. I don't have one. I don't want. I don't. Okay. I don't want to guess on garbage. Okay, so the number. So you guys guessed lifeboats slash lifeboat, which I apparently combined, and those are two very different games. Chat, don't forget that. Very uh, different. That was well, number one. Actually, they're both they're both mean, vicious games. Lifeboats, you're just trying to get a bunch of people safely to an island. Lifeboat, you are one person, and you may or may not want to kill yourself. Oh, well, that's pleasant. Uh, so the number two answer was survive, escape from Atlantis. You all guessed that. You got Jamaica, the number three. The number four response was Robinson Crusoe. What okay. is with people? We're going <laughs> to yeah. be fine on this cruise ship, people. <laughs> uh, five was Titanic, uh, and I chose. I combined all Titanic games. Uh, number six was Captain Sonar. Number seven was Get Bit. <laughs> <laughs> and number eight was Panamax. Ah, <laughs> okay. yeah. It's like the, the, the only one in there that's not destruction and death. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, and let's see here. We'll come back to that one if we have time. I'm going to skip to this one. So our next question, um, 137 people were surveyed. The top six answers are on the board. What mass market slash older board game would be even worse to play if it was re-released with a cruise ship theme? And uh, Eric gets to go first this time. Oh, goody. Um, it would be even worse if released with a cruise ship theme. I mean, basically, this is just a study in what mass market games do copy board gamers not like, I think. But who knows? <laughs> well, then let's just stab away with Monopoly. That is the number one response. <laughs> Monopoly. So that is worth six points for Eric. Okay, this is a, a lack of... A lack of trying there on people's parts. Come on. You can't just throw Monopoly out there. Got to go with like the audience. Of, ah, boo. Uh, 30 people said Monopoly. I'm not, I haven't been saying how many people I said don't actually blame the people, though, for that. That was a bad question. Oh, well, then let's just <laughs> skip to another one. Now that, well, now that Eric has points from it and you don't, let's move on, Tom. Yeah, but uh, you can just bail. I don't know why I'm trying if you got the number one answer. Um, so I'll say life. Uh, life is the number six answer, so that is worth one point. Here, I'll give you all e both one more guess, and then we'll move on. Wow, she doesn't take criticism of her questions easily. She's like, we're out. No, no, if it's a bad question, I don't want to make bad content, so we should just move on. Just as a heads up, I'm going to say all your questions are bad, even if they're good, so don't take my... I mean, this one is actually strongly. pretty bad, but I just think it's funny. Like, people, <laughs> like, there was enough, like continuity and answers that there were groupings and so i feel like there must be something there but i don't know what it is i think some people would if you had said name a bad game that uses any theme they would have said monopoly <laughs> come on Eric, gonna, candy land candy land is the number five answer i would play candy land on a, <laughs> the, the cruise ship edition that sounds good you know what i just found on spotify i found a whole food themed album by weird like, al yankovic no 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 it's like serious like it started out with candy man it had sugar sugar uh food glorious food spoonful of sugar i i don't know why i found this it was recommended for me that does that should i i don't know what's wrong with spotify <laughs> that says more about you than it does spotify i think <laughs> i was listening to mary poppins that's what i went okay anyway all right anyway. uh Wasn't that your guess no but see here's one thing like I want to say Clue because people are throwing it. It can't be Clue because Clue would be good with the cruise ship. It would be better than normal Clue, in my opinion. Scrabble. I mean, most games with Monopoly would be better with a cruise thing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you saying Scrabble about building words would be better with a cruise ship theme? Is that what I you think just said? A cruise ship theme would make most of these games better. I you think can only gonna... spell words about cruising. <laughs> that doesn't cruising. sound like fun. Scrabble then, because I'm going to answer properly and not try to get it right. 
Scrabble is not on the list. <laughs> well, it should be over Monopoly because Monopoly and a cruise ship sounds more interesting than Monopoly. Uh huh. Okay. Isn't that Tropical Tycoon anyway? Shut up, Eric. <laughs> well, let's just run down the other answers that were on the board. Uh, the the number two answer was Battleship, <laughs> which ah. I think is hilarious because if they were cruise ships instead of <laughs> play Battleship Cruise Edition, <laughs> come on. Uh, the other the other answers on the board that you did not get were Sorry, Risk, and Life. So so people just basically said let's list some mass market games. Boo, boo to you survey takers. No how, effort put into that at all. Also how would risk work takers. on a cruise ship? <clears throat> all right. Well, uh, you know what? It's first class against the balconies <laughs> <laughs> and they're fighting over the the buffet line. Yeah. All right, Tom. <laughs> let's uh let's let's try and feed your ego a little bit here. Uh 137 people surveyed. The top seven answers are on the board. What style of hat? Should Tom Vassell wear while on a cruise? <laughs> and uh, yes, you get to go first, Tom. So uh, now for the record, hold on. I'm going to state, I'm going to do the little disclaimer thing that you do a lot. I combined stuff and in sometimes weird ways because everybody answered something differently slightly. And I tried to group things, but whatever. Just it's, it is what it is. Uh, that happens to me a lot. That's when I throw those questions out. Um... <laughs> I only had a day, Tom. I'll say captain's hat slash seaman hat, like a, you know, a, a I, captain. I on the, you know what I'm talking about. A captain's hat is the number one response. <laughs> People think that you should be the captain now. Apparently, <laughs> you know what? Okay, so we were surveying the, the cruise ship on Monday, going through, and I saw a group of people wearing those hats. I would never bring one of those on a cruise ship because I feel like, hey, it would. It's like. You're not the captain. <laughs> it's like going to Japan and wearing Japanese clothing. Just, I don't know. It just feels like you're like, look at me. I'm like you. That's you like know? going into Buckingham Palace with a crown on your head. <laughs> right. right. It just it feels very odd. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't pack it on the ship. Um, if they gave me one, I'd wear it. But I mean, right. we will give each of you two responses on here. Uh, there are seven total answers. But uh, Eric, what type of hat should Tom Vassell wear on a cruise? Is uh, a pirate a separate entry? Because I'll choose pirate. Pirate is a separate entry. It is the number four response. That is a much cooler hat. I'd wear a pirate hat. All right, I'm going to think that maybe a lot of people think cruises go to Mexico, so I'll say sombrero. <laughs> um, that, that's So I combined some stuff, and the category ended up being floppy or large hat, and that included <laughs> sombrero. <laughs> That is, the, <laughs> that is the number three response. Come on now. <laughs> so, that okay, is, hey kids, go grab me one of my floppy hats. Here's the sombrero, Dad. Oh. There were a lot of <laughs> responses. I was able to group things. It just was tenuous <laughs> at best. It's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, Eric, what is your last guess? I want to see Tom standing at the bow of the boat, wind blowing through his propeller beanie. Unfortunately, Ooh. that one is not on the oh, board. That is a good. I don't have one of those, Eric. You know, I um, never see so any good ones anymore. The other top answers. The number two answer was either a straw or Panama hat. Oh, that's uh, a good answer. Yeah. Uh, number five was a fedora. You wear those a lot. I imagine I'm that's why. I wear those on a cruise anyway. Yeah. So yes. Um, and number six was a sailor cap, which I treated as something different than a captain's hat. And number seven, which is my favorite, is a top hat. <laughs> Fancy. I, I thought about bringing one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funnier then. Okay. All right. Um, 137 people surveyed. The top eight answers are on the board. If money and time weren't a factor, where's your dream cruise destination? Uh, Eric, you get to go first this time. Japan. Uh, Japan is not on the list. We weren't just talking about me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was my first thing. I was like, ooh, um, for me, it would be a, a, for me personally, it would be one of those world cruises. I'd love to take like a, a you know, like half a year and just travel around the world. Um, and I, will, I should have said this before Eric guessed, but I don't think it probably would have affected him. Some of these 
uh, are countries and some of these are regions. Yeah, so. sure. Oh. I think a lot of people, if they could, man, Japan, you know, because we're asking gamers and they'd be like, oh, we want those Japanese games. Um, it would be a good place. I'm not. I'm not going to say Mediterranean just based on sheer stubbornness. You I'll go to trade. Alaska. Alaska. Alaska is on the board. It is the number two response that is worth seven points. I'm content with that. I can get no more points. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric, give me another one. Uh, the the Caribbean. The Caribbean is on the list. It is number eight. It is the last one on the list. Um, Ooh. So that is uh, worth one point. I'm going to guess a lot of people said, I don't care. Uh, not on the board. Did some people say that and you just were too lazy to put those no. together? <laughs> no. I think one person typed in mm, like H-M-M-M -M -M for this one, um, but almost everybody else had an answer. How about Antarctica? Antarctica is on the list. It is the number four answer. So that is worth five points. Do cruises go to Antarctica? They do. Time and money, not a factor. Um, uh, Brain Games oh, is fine. doing now, that contest right now. Like Brain Games has oh. that contest right now to win a cruise to Antarctica, isn't it? Yes, I, I, I knew that actually. You're a judge. <laughs> You're a judge. I'm a judge in that contest. <laughs> really? Maybe this was my way of um, spreading the word of that contest. Oh. All right, I'll say, you know what? I'm going to say around the world because some people might have said that. There were some people that said that. Unfortunately, it is not on the board. It was not one of the more popular responses. Um, and Tom got to guess first. So Eric will say this is your last guess. Last guess. Where haven't we? Let's say Ireland. Um, you thought that would be on the list. I thought, you know, like the, the, you know, the, the British Isles, the cliffs of Dover. Yeah. Oh, you had so many options in Europe and you chose wrong, <laughs> sir. Uh, so that is not on the board. So our, I'll just read through all eight. I know you guys guessed a couple of them, but number one, uh, Tom gave it to you, Eric, and you didn't even take it. It was the Mediterranean. Number one answer. <laughs> not saying it out of sheer... No, no. <laughs> number two was Alaska. Number three was Australia. Number four was Antarctica. Five was Hawaii. Mm. Uh, six was Scandinavia. Um, so I included all answers, Norway, uh, Iceland, those su such and such. Okay. Um, number seven was New Zealand. And oh, yeah. number eight was the Caribbean. Actually, we were talking to the guy who was setting up our cruise with us, and he said... Of all the places in the Caribbean and the Greek islands, that was the coolest place he's ever been. Hmm. I would love to go to Greece sometime. Oh, wait, Greek so islands. Now's our time to announce Dice Tower Mediterranean. No, it's not happening. Sorry. <laughs> My brain. All right, last question. So this is for all the marbles. Uh, right now, Tom has 47 points to Eric's 45. So it is very close. Oh. Yeah, so close. Uh, and Eric gets to go first this time. 137 people surveyed. Top seven answers are on the board. Which dice tower personality would you most like to be trapped on a lifeboat with? Oh boy. <laughs> Z Garcia. That is the number one response for seven points. Z okay. Garcia ran okay. away with it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna like lay some truth on you all. What you see. It's not what happens. Being trapped with Z Garcia would be like a horrific. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's very horrible and mean and awful in person. No one would ever want to hang out with him ever. Well, if Eric got the number one answer. Hasn't he won by default? No, because. If you, you could can... get two and three and then I could bomb. Yeah. Like... Okay. Well, let's see. I know it's not going to be him. It's not going to be him. It's not going to be him. <laughs> Crystal asked the question, so I'm going to go with Crystal. Crystal is on the list, mostly because people who know me filled out this survey, I'm sure. I am the number three response. Ah, see? So that is five points. Hi, Eric. Let's see how egotistical you are. Uh... <laughs> 
If you do I this, don't... are you willing to win <laughs> at the expense of your pride? <laughs> this is not a judgment on the Dice Tower personalities as a whole, just it on their ability to be trapped on a lifeboat. It is life definitely boat. a judgment on Dice Tower personalities. You cannot say it's not. Oh, no, it's fine. I feel like we're playing that game. Uh... Well, we're playing lifeboat right now is what we're doing. Actually, you know why, why Eric is thinking. I just there was a game that's just like this. I looked at last night that I'll never play called Pug You, mm -hmm. and it has cute artwork of pugs, but it asks questions just like this that are super record, mean. I mean, for I, the record, I only did this because I knew it would be taken in the spirit in which I intended it. So, wow, Crystal's real sensitive about me like mocking her answers. Just you know, I'm gonna mock them even if they were like from a book that you. I'm sorry. Do you not know me? Like that's literally my like <laughs> shtick is overanalyzing <laughs> and not understanding sarcasm. Like that's my thing. So, all right, okay. So I'm gonna say I will tell everyone stories, and so I'm I'm gonna vote me. Eric is on the list. He is the number two response. Okay. I hope you could sleep tonight, Summerer. <laughs> I gotta go for the point, man. Um, I mean, theoretically, if I give Tom here, you know what? If I'm Eric, you tell me if you want this to happen or not. Uh, you are ahead by six points right now, and we've already guessed the top three responses. So four, five, six, seven. There's uh, there's four answers left, and he'd have to get two of them spot on to to beat you. Oh. I'll say if he can guess. What other way of getting them is there? <laughs> You'd have to get four and five, is what what you're saying. Wait, but there's only like, so now uh, I'm starting to wonder, I think we shouldn't even hear the rest of the list because someone's not going to be on it. And that would be cruel. <laughs> well, technically, what's funny is actually every, almost every single Dice Tower personality was named, which I thought was actually kind of really yeah, neat. Yeah, but they weren't all named because I know the number of personalities. I'm going to guess. More than 137? I'm going to guess. <sighs> For sheer purposes of, I could overpower and eat this person in case of necessity. Jason Levine. Jason is not on the list. I will put Tom on the list. Tom is the number seven response. So that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should be like offended about that <laughs> or glad. They want and... to play games with you. They just don't want to be trapped on a lifeboat with you, Tom. No, because probably... of you making fun of my I, questions. That's why. like 50 pounds. I'm, oh. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to call it there. Uh, final score, Eric has 58. Tom has 53. So Eric is the winner. Woo <laughs> um, I don't know if we're ending at 7 tonight or, well, 10 for you all, or if we're going to go a little later. But if anybody in the chat has any questions for us about the cruise or otherwise, drop them in the chat now, and we can answer a couple real quick before we head out. Um. So, Crystal, are you bringing any games? Um, I'm definitely going to bring my quiver, which I usually have anywhere between 10 to 13-ish games in. Um, but other than that, I'm not... Well, I'm bringing Strike, of course. And I don't... Wait, no, Tom, do you like Strike? Who is it that doesn't like Strike? It's Z that doesn't. Oh, no. you don't either? Yeah. Look, I tried to like Strike, but it has. there's no game. There's no I, game. I love it so much. It I have yet most, to play. It was my most played game of 2018. I'm going to make a list of games not allowed in the cruise. <laughs> well, Ambi and I, I believe, are both bringing our copies of Strike, so too bad. <laughs> we mean too bad. How are you going to get on the ship? <laughs> what, you're going to go through my luggage? <laughs> no. Oh, man. Uh, excuse me. The, after they're done inspecting your thing, the board game inspectors are going to come, and we're going to check. <laughs> yeah, contraband stuff. alcohol and contraband board games. Got to confiscate all of it. Um, I will say... So the reason I included the uh, question about the mass market games earlier was mostly because of one of the funny responses that happened, and I forgot to mention it. Somebody typed Yahtzee, but like spelled it like yacht, like a boat. Oh, yacht, yes. Yahtzee. And I oh, was Crystal, like, oh. you know that Yahtzee comes from that word. Right. <sighs> I know, but let me, come on, get, let me commend somebody for being clever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you knew that. Cause, Maybe cause not. You just, yeah, you just pulled a Jason Levine on me there. Yeah, <laughs> no. No. Oh, darn Jason for getting you good at this. He does that same thing. He's like, I knew that. 
Well, what? it's not spelled like the word yacht normally at this point, and they no, spelled it like the word first told yacht. me that, I didn't believe them, but I did some research, and they played this game on a yacht so much that, yes, they yeah. called it Yahtzee. Interesting. No, I did not know that, and that will be helpful for me at Trivia. So I appreciate the uh, information. Bruce asks if we'll be streaming while we're on the cruise. No, I don't think so, just because we're not sure about internet connections, and it's very expensive to have That's not – actually, both those reasons are not – actually it um they because i know that streaming is getting better on a ship as time mm -hmm. goes by but the fact is is that i want to make the cruise a good event for people who are there and streaming does not help that streaming is so much work to do that it, it's better that we also it comes off almost a little bit like uh ha 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 you're not here we are here but you are not it almost feels that way yeah we'll save that for the podcast episode I really try not to do that either. <laughs> um, well, it doesn't look like there are a lot of questions in well, the so chat. Someone asked when next year's cruise is going to be. We have not mm -hmm. actually yet decided. It's going to be in 2020. Um, we will know a few weeks after the cruise. We have some dates. We're just narrowing it down and working on that right now. I'm excited. This will be, I mean, Dice, at Dice Tower Con, we were all there, but this will be the first time that the whole Dice Tower gang, including those of us who live afar, will be all together again, I think, since um, since Dice Tower Con. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's uh, obviously not everyone will be there. Um, the Murph brothers are not there for legal reasons. Uh, <laughs> You know what? They were actually, they posted something on Twitter one day. And so I went back to the board game breakfast from MeepleCon last year. And I pulled out the gif of me shoving them out of the frame while you were recording. And I responded to a tweet of theirs with me shoving them. And it was great. <laughs> oh, you know, they recorded all that stuff at MeepleCon and then it, they, they, their footage got destroyed. Hmm. They were interrupting all of our shows and everything. It was very sad. Oh. Well, the board game any... breakfast stuff was still there. Any specific games we plan to play for the first time on the cruise? I really need to play Underwater Cities. I haven't done that yet. Underwater Cities is going to be in the hot games room because yeah. we have one copy. Uh, I, I, I did my best to try to find another copy. I just couldn't get one. Uh, but that one, and I think that will be the one of the most played games in the cruise other than Wingspan will probably be the most played game. Probably. Now that we can talk about it. <laughs> on the, at the retreat we're like don't tell anyone that you played this game i don't think there's a whole lot more questions here uh well there was a couple questions like how many people is there something uh, before the cruise yes we're doing a meetup in lauderdale at the ho at a hotel um is how many people are going it's like 640 people i think uh, are we? Am I playing Werewolf again this year in the cruise? I decided to wait till the cruise started to decide that. Hmm. Uh, the, the the ship has a slight different layout this time. I haven't so, played Werewolf in years. It's a game that I tend to shy away from with strangers at like conventions sometimes. But I feel like this will be a really good, fun group to potentially to play it with. What game? Werewolf. Like I just haven't played it in a long time because I'm always wary to play it with strangers. Oh well, last year we played it on the up the the top deck at night. <laughs> That's was, pretty cool. It was so good because the wind was blowing, and it, it was just a very cool vibe to it. Um, also, I saw um, one young lady get very angry at her fiance, maybe because he did not believe her when she correctly pointed out all the werewolves. Huh. Uh, yeah, my uh, my husband and I tend to get pretty uh, intense, and it's really fun for me when I can pull one over on him because he used to be a professional poker player and he can read me really well. So when I can trick him, it's the best. <laughs> nice. Uh, two rooms and a boom will be there. Yeah, so it's last year was amazing and fun on the outside deck. Yeah, I mean we might do that again. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I, I'm, Right now, I'm, I'm slightly frazzled. I just, unlike some folks, I spend a lot of time on my game shows. So I've been uh, putting a lot of effort into those over the past few days. I literally wow. didn't know I was hosting. 
<laughs> I know that you're just making fun of me, but I, I, was actually, I have to defend myself. I was actually very nervous that Crystal was going to ask some of the questions that I did. I, I, uh, I, 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 um, I considered that. I tried to like, that's why I kind of tried to go off the grid a little bit. So no, some of your questions were precariously close to mine. Okay. Uh, Although I, I already asked the, some of, some of the questions that you asked are close to questions I've asked in past years. So I try never to repeat a question, but I think it's going to happen at some point. I mean, if people are remembering things that well, then good <laughs> for them. <laughs> well, Crystal, I think you get mad props for the prep for the uh, this game. That was great. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I better take off my, my, hang on, take off my sarcasm hat here. No, Crystal did a fantastic job. I don't want people to like send me mean emails. Be nice to Crystal. She's fantastic. Honestly, a couple of the questions were skeptical at best, but since I only did six total, I was like, well, we're throwing them in here anyway. It's happening. So I just I was, want I'm, not being the straight guy for once. <laughs> and I really I appreciate any of you out there who did respond to my survey today, because that's the only day it existed. Thank you so much for doing that. So I could compile answers during my lunch break at work. <laughs> Well, oh. I think we better let Tom get back to cruise prep. Uh, Tom doesn't want to go. Tom wants to go to bed. Or go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, but I'll tell you what, folks. I saw some neat stuff today and yesterday for our upcoming Kickstarter, January 21st. You definitely want to check that out. Um, it's January 21st that's coming up on. And we got a lot of cool things coming up in the future. Uh, and we have... There, I'll be doing reviews all this week and next week, even when the cruise, there'll still be videos going up. Uh, board Game Breakfast is still happening on Monday, but it might be different. We'll see. Huh. Just think, who's not going to be on the cruise? Uh -huh ho. Well, Tom, thank you so much for joining us for Dice Tower tonight and being our special guest. We really appreciate it. <laughs> no response whatsoever. I like oh. it. I'm sorry. It is my pleasure. <laughs> we honestly, truthfully, thank you for trusting us and handing the reins over to us for future episodes. But we do hope that you will come back and join us occasionally, um, you know, if you are available and feeling frisky and need someone to make fun of. <laughs> feeling frisky. Great. <clears throat> so I guess we show. should wrap I'm not it doing up. the outro. Yeah, you're All not right. doing the outro. <laughs> All right. Well, so until uh, next time, I'm Crystal Pisano. I'm Tom and, I'm er and I'm Eric Summer. And you have been watching Dice Tower tonight. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Promotional consideration has been provided by game publishers in the form of review copies of games. Crystal and I will see you in two weeks for another installment. Our show is supported by viewers like you. Thank you. Dice Tower tonight is produced by Tom, Crystal, and me with assistance from Derek Porter and Rob Searing. Arguments amongst aerial scavengers provided by Clash of Vultures. Timothy Pinkham composed our theme, and hosting is provided by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games at great prices at CoolStuffInc.com. Give us your feedback on the Dice Tower Guild at BoardGameGeek on Facebook or Twitter, or by emailing us at Dicetower at gmail.com. And don't forget to visit the other shows in the Dice Tower Network. Find something new at Dicetowernetwork.com. Until next time, from all of us at the Dice Tower, have, Have fun, fun gaming. gaming. I guess I'll hit stop broadcast.